that's who I am. That's what we're going to talk about. And I want to talk today in a mini clinic environment, which we'll spend a little bit of time at the end of this mini clinic asking if this is the direction you want the mini clinics to take. Um, to remind you that many clinics are intended as short, one subject, a high level, 15 minute type clinic that discusses the beginning stages of modeling and some of that kind of stuff. The, the things that people have been asking us for a long time, why don't you guys do some of these kind of things? So my, my clinic today starts at the beginning with bench work. Um, there actually is one step probably earlier than this that would be called planning the layout. Um, but my assumption is that that's not going to be done in the kind of world we're talking about in many clinics. Bench work is comprised of the following elements. There is a frame that holds the structure together and supports it. There is a sub road bed, which is used to um, uh, support the track. And then there is whatever supporting structure you want to use to support the whole bench work frame itself. The frame, it, it could consist of, an as an example, a hollow core door. Um, making it as big as you possibly could at 30 or 30 by 80 inches. Uh, they call them in Lowe's a primed slab hardboard door. Okay. The door itself, however, poses difficulties with below deck wiring because unless you build, build some additional framework underneath it, you have a solid bottom and the wires would come out the bottom of the unit and be dangerously sticking out and could be ripped apart by a, you know, an error in placement or some of that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about hollow core doors as a frame, although several people have used them. Or as I say, do it yourself with a uh, four, 48 inch by nine, by nine, eight feet by three eighths inch plywood top. Now, that the doesn't have to be 48 inches. It could be 36 inches, but 48 inches is the normal size of plywood. And so that would allow you to use one piece of, uh, of plywood on the top and then um, cut into whatever width you want. But I'm assuming we'd, you'd wanna use all 48 inches of it for your, for your beginning uh, bench work. You want to box in the plywood using three eighth inch or half inch plywood cut with a table saw or a circular power saw and a couple of internal cross bases. You know, think about $45 at Lowe's for the wood. That's the top itself. Both of these need to be supported on some kind of a folding table. And my, but my recommendation with in, improperly spelled with two C's is to go the do-it-yourself path. Now, let me tell you a little bit about do-it-yourself stuff. People get kind of afraid of using tools or they don't have tools, but generally I have found that as I go forward in doing projects, I can buy something that's finished or I can do it myself. And when I do it myself, I get free the kind of woodworking stuff or whatever the case might be that you could buy it at, um, at, at a place like Harbor Freight. So in this case, you'd need to have some kind of a saw and it would be a, you know, a table saw or a circular power saw. It, clearly the hollow core door is up in the hundred dollar range. The plywood is in the $45 range. So you got five, $55 to play with to go get a saw is my point. Okay, so those are the two parts we've been talking about. The table construction itself has a plywood top and it has a frame underneath it. And that frame you'll notice is 47 by 96. Um, it could be exactly you know, 48 if you wanted to do so. But it, if I look at the drawings carefully, assuming a half inch of it, that means that there's 
a 48 inch wide seam all the way around the outside of it. The picture that I have here shows 20 inches of separation inside the frame. You could safely, I believe, even go to 24 inches, but you shouldn't go any larger than that because then the supporting frame will, will, will begin to lose some of its ability to, from a strength standpoint. Now, what, what do you really need in the way of strength? Well, nobody's gonna be sitting or standing on it, maybe, but maybe they are. And so you want that to be strong enough so that it would support at least one person's weight um, without doing all sorts of bowing and buckling because your scenery is gonna be on it and your scenery will crack if that happens. It'll, 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 it'll not disintegrate, but it'll crack. The material for the, the frame itself um, I'm, I'm listed here so that, you know, you kind of get an idea of what you need. One, a one inch by two and a half inch by eight foot furring strip boards. They need six of them. So if you go back to the other, other drawing, um, you'll see those furring strips are what runs underneath the board and around the four sides. A four by eight by one half inch sheathing plywood. And those are the names, those furring strip and sheathing plywood are the names of, of what they have at Home Depot or at Lowe's. That's what they call them. You'll need some kind of a saw to cut the furring strips to size. You'll need some kind of good glue. And I have found over the time that well bond glue is the best to be used for, is what I use for everything wood. And you will want to glue and screw everything with the well bond glue. You will need a, a bunch of number six by two and a quarter flathead screws for the furring stream, the furring strip frame. You'll need some eight by one and an eighth inch flathead screws to attach the sheathing plywood to the frame. And when you get all done with that, you wanna seal, varnish, and sand the assembled frame. Um, so that it has all of its roughness out of it and all the rest of the stuff so you can handle it. So that's the do-it-yourself portion of the, the frame. Sub road bed, you all know that I like to use a cut sheet of one inch by 48 by 96, four by, four by eight. Extruded polyfoam insulation as the platform for my track. And I would recommend that you do this even on a small, environment like this. It provides a good base for the track to be glued onto, as well as a base to extend the layout in the vertical dimension for creeks, rivers, and hills up and down from the top. That foam board is uh, going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think, uh, 25 bucks, something like that. Uh, a one inch by, so the materials for the road board, one by four by nine by eight extruded polyfoam insulation board, a tube of liquid nails projects. Um, the reason you got to be kind of specific here is some of the, the stuff you buy uh, for construction grade gluing uh, will melt the foam and you don't want that to happen. This is this foam liquid nails project is, is fast bonding. It won't melt the foam board. It's humidity resistance. I've, I've had it on my layout here in, in Louisville, sitting on it um, for the better part of a year now. And a saw, you'll need a saw to cut the poly foam in the same size as the frame. So if you make it four by eight on the frame, the four by eight poly foam, same size. But if you don't, you got to cut it. Okay, so the supporting structure is kind of the, the last of the process. It, the easiest but most expensive structure is to set it on top of a folding table. Um, and the cost of the table is what makes it expensive. Um, you'll be able to do the wiring inside of the hollow, if you want, of the, of the thing. So you're you won't have anything for the table to attack that uh, attack on your uh, layout. You could use legs in the four corners to allow the bench work to be freestanding, but you got to put some significant thinking into how do you give strength to your 
to your whole system without wobbling. Um, in my case, I have a permanent layout where I use legs, but I, I attach at the wall side, the whole structure is attached to the wall and the legs just support the exterior part out and it's very stable. Not so if it's, if it's a, in a non-attached basis. You could use as a different um, supporting structure, the idea of putting four casters on the bottom of the frame to allow for a lot of portability. And by casters, I mean those rolling wheel things that they come very small and they come big, they come two inch and they come four inch. That allows you to roll that around. And if you're making something like this for the grandkids, to put them, put underneath their bed, to, to hide it, to put it away somewhere. And it has strong uh, support. I don't recall, Larry, that the mod, that the layout that you built that you're gonna show at the train show has anything on the bottom or do, did you put casters on it? You, I don't remember. Oh, uh, yes, I did. You did put casters on yeah, it. Yeah, okay. so you can slide it under the bed. So Larry's got an example of it that you'll see at the train show um, that, that uses it. And I think that's, a, that's really kind of a good idea because um, it gets it out of the way if you're not using it, the uh, roll under the bed, you can stand it on its edge and everything else. But there's some there's some you know issues with what you do with structures on the top of it and everything else. Okay, so folding folding plastic table, eight feet long, 30 inches wide, could be a set of four casters, allows the layout to be more portable using two inch or four inch casters. Uh, build it with permanent legs to support it more rigidly. Um, another example is if you got a ping pong table or a pool table sitting around idle in your basement, you could put it on top of that and use the pool table for a supporting structure. So my recommendations, um, make your own layout using your own skills and your tools. Build a frame of one by three wood furring strips. You can buy them in that size. They're about two and a half inches, actually. They're not three. Uh, but when you buy a one by three, that's what you get. And a half inch frame of, of plywood all glued and screwed together. Uh, when you put it together for gluing and screwing, make sure you've got some right angle um, attachments that you can use to make sure you are fully square. But if you do it kind of all in one pass and still have some flexibility, when you put the sheet of plywood on the top of it, you will make it as rigid as it ever needs to be. But until you get that plywood on, it can whoopee whoop all over the place. Um, or you can use an eight foot centerfold table, 30 inch by 96 by 29 for your platform. Those are the kind of things we use for T-Track and we get them at the hotels, okay? That's called a center fold table. Uh, the legs fold towards the center, et cetera, et cetera. And I said as, or mount forecasters for fold line flexibility. <clears throat> okay, so then it's time for you to start thinking about a track plan uh, on top of this now provided base. And I can tell you there are hundreds of first layout plans of all sizes, shapes, and scale on the internet. And, and I'm not recommending a minute, uh, you know, a manufacturer for the track. If you think, and, and if you think this mini clinic helps you with the bench work, save your thoughts about a follow-up for the discussion at the end of the clinic. I would be willing to present these all as a series, you know, starting off of my building the base base plan, bridge, uh, base work um, plan. And I would be willing to do track planning, track installation, wiring tools, et cetera, as a future mini clinic. Okay, any questions 